the biggest series of the year to this point for the New York Mets. A five-game set starting tomorrow against the Atlanta Braves. We have five storylines ahead of this big matchup. Sam Davis, Andrew Galata. Andrew, it's been uh, an interesting uh, couple of days for the New York Mets between the trade deadline yesterday and, of course, a big series coming up starting Thursday against Atlanta. I'm just curious, and maybe this is more from a personal note, but where's your head at right now with this group? And I hope you're doing okay with a little yeah. bit of stress going on over the last couple of days with the Mets. So, Sam, we usually trade texts about this Mets team quite a bit, and I've always been the very positive with this team. I love this team. They're the best team I've ever seen as a Mets fan and obviously been able to cover the team for WFUV. This team, to me, is really, really good. And obviously the trade deadline – I think everybody expected them to get someone with more impact than maybe a Darren Ruff, or we'll obviously get into it later, or Darren Ruff, Daniel Vogelbach, and they obviously don't do that, and they only come away with one reliever. I think that was kind of a big issue, and no catcher. So that's something that is definitely disheartening. It's disappointing as, as, as a fan, and you know when, when you see the even the holes covering the team, you're just like, oh, they have Steve Cohen, they have Billy Epler. Epler's done a great job in the offseason to fill holes. You expect them to at least make one pretty big trade, and you don't get that done. You compound that with a loss to the Nationals and Jacob deGrom's return, yep. which was supposed to be this triumphant game, and obviously against the Nationals, who just traded away Juan Soto. You're thinking you can run over them, and you lose by four runs in a 5-1 loss. So you compile that with, and you're coming in so high, seven-game winning streak before the All-Star break. You beat the Braves, and in a three-game series in Atlanta, you're feeling really good, and then you see things kind of come to a halt. But I'm still positive about this team right now. Still positive about this group. I want to get into, of course, let's start with the trade deadline. That's our first you know, big storyline heading into Thursday. Obviously, it's a big storyline right now with this group as we record this on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think the Mets failed at the deadline. You know, I really do think that um, – there's a couple things, you know, we'll start with kind of their decision to platoon at the DH position. Um, not a lot of people mind that decision. I think it definitely could work out. Um, Vogelbach has been very good um, against righties, 267 average, 12 homers, 25 RBIs. And Ruff has been very good against lefties, 252, 9 homers, 24 RBIs. So you combine those two guys and you get, uh, I would say, one above average major league player between the two in terms of, you know, the righty-lefty splits. That's fine. Um, the fact that they gave up, what was it, four prospects for Three, Ruff, pro three, three prospects, prospects plus J.D. And J.D. Davis. Davis. So they gave up three prospects in a major leaguer for Ruff. Um, that seems like a lot to me, uh, considering the fact that, you know, we talked about uh, the relievers and how the Mets did get Michael Givens. Um, so they did get a reliever. However, they didn't get their, I guess, guy in, 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 in Robertson. I think that was their big piece. And, and of course, of course, with the Mets, the <laughs> Phillies get him. Um, the Phillies give up one prop prospect uh, for Robertson. Meanwhile, the Mets gave up three um, for Ruff. So just kind of, I guess, um, that kind of started uh, the, you know, sort of slipping here at the deadline. Then you don't get a catcher as well. Epler goes out and says, you know, McCann and Nito are going to be the guys right now, which to me is kind of unacceptable with a group that is, you know, trying to make a run here in the playoffs. I find it really hard to believe that Francisco Alvarez doesn't come up within the month of August yeah. at, at this point. And I've been saying for a while that I've wanted a catcher because you don't want to really bring Alvarez in that situation. Like, he's going to have to fill the position and be kind of a savior of sorts. Now, maybe you could kind of put in the lens as you just have to be better than Tomas Nito and nothing against Tomas Nito, yeah. but obviously you look at his OPS, it's like 500. So it's not like a huge bar. But then again, for him to come in here and like if he's your, you know, they're gonna like paint him as your big deadline acquisition. I don't think that's the right move there. That, that's what I think I'm most disappointed about that. And I, I think a lefty reliever. This team needs a lefty reliever. And and I, uh, and, and, and Epler said that the the bullpen and the reliever market was robust. That that he he was quoted as saying that he said there was a lot of arms available. There's really no excuse for not getting that lefty arm. There's really no excuse. It's an obvious need, and they just didn't go out and get it. And I guess holding on to prospects is the reason behind that. But these other teams aren't giving up that much to get these guys. So then it comes into question, you know, what is Epler doing in terms of negotiation yeah. here? You know, why are all these prospects being needed for especially a guy like Darren Ruff or even a reliever? That's what's confusing. I, I, would say. I, I think the thing with, with the Ruff trade, I don't think J.D. Davis holds any value. Yeah. And he may hold, like, negative value because he had no spot on this Mets team. So it was either DFA him after they get Ruff 
or trade him away in the trade because I mean you look at JD Davis he comes in when he was really into this year he's going to hit, hit hit lefties and he's a 660 OPS against lefties this year which is just not good and I'm a guy that's kind of been I'm sick of JD Davis I'm happy he's gone and you know he's a guy that supposedly they love him in the clubhouse and that's great and all but at the end of the day he wasn't producing and between him and Dom Smith who is somehow on this roster I don't know where he's going to fit in once he comes back from injury that that's something that I think maybe with with that move why they gave up multiple prospects and none of these guys I don't think are like going to be the next Jacob DeGrom or whatever that is with prospects but I'm surprised they didn't go after a guy like Andrew Chafin who ends up not being moved by the Tigers but he's a veteran guy lefty and you feel like he would fit so so well in this bullpen and they just end up not pulling the trigger. There was a couple moves there where they really just decided, yeah. you know, Contreras is, I think, another example of, you know, maybe the Cubs were asking for but a how lot. how did the Cubs not move him, though? I don't understand that either. <laughs> I don't get that. And I don't know. Obviously, we don't know the details of these negotiations, so we don't really know what the Cubs were asking for. We don't know what the Mets, you know, thought was reasonable for Contreras. So that was another example of a, of a spot where the Mets could have improved. They ended up not getting help at the catching position. I think ultimately also – what makes this, I think, deadline somewhat worse for the Mets is the fact that the Braves and Phillies, I think, got better in my eyes. I think the uh, the Iglesias move uh, for the Braves, right, you know, I, I would say, I think it was even after, it got the, announced after, after the deadline. But... So right at the deadline, that move was really big for them. Odorizzi is another nice move for them as well. Um, you know, and, the, and we mentioned the Phillies getting Robertson and, uh, you know, they get Syndergaard as well, which should be interesting. <laughs> Look, I'm happy for him to come um, to City Field. That should be a fun That fun will be games. that will be not very fun for him, I don't think. <laughs> very fun for Mets fans. But um, just I think that's what kind of makes this a little bit worse. I would say both of the teams in the NL East that are in contention and in, in addition to the Mets got better as well. I would say almost, you know, better than the Mets did at this deadline. I'm not worried about the Phillies, so whatever they did, I don't think it, it puts it them just in that when you get, when you, With Robertson as a guy you really want, yeah, Robertson, you know, a guy that definitely could help this group, and, and, and you see him go to the Phillies, that's that, that just True. stings a little bit. I, would say. I just, Robertson, like, I, I know that was kind of the Mets' target, but I I still think they needed a lefty more than Robertson because yeah. I think that's, because in, in the playoffs, and we all know those situations come into play where you like to have a, a plus lefty, and we kind of saw David Peterson try out in that role in the Yankee series to no avail. Yeah. So you're going to go in to the postseason with no real lefty, which I, I think is a bigger issue than maybe an eighth inning guy that at the end of the day, you can kind of, especially if you're going into the playoffs, four starters, you're thinking six guys are going to be in that rotation come playoff time. That would be starters. If you can move a McGill to the, bullpen and he I think has plus stuff for the bullpen or a cookie Carrasco I think is another guy that if he's not starting I think could kind of give you veteran innings late in games has been in the playoffs before so I I do think that isn't the worst thing I think it's more the lefty because they don't have a lefty I think the Braves did a great job in what they needed to do and that I think is probably stings more yeah. now I don't think they made any like 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 world shattering moves. I don't no. think the division's won by the Braves at the deadline. No, but the thing is, is they didn't do that last year either. You know, the no. moves last year were, I think, good for their group. You know, they needed outfield help and they got it. And, and, and you know, kind of similar to this year, they needed a little starting pitching help. But Jake and they Odorizzi got it. is not going to move no, the needle. I understand in my that. Like, I, I, I totally get that. But I think there's, there's value to be said in when you're a fan of a team saying, okay, this is, <laughs> this is a hole with our group. This well, it's is expectations. A, this you know? is an opportunity that we need to, you know, address. And and they addressed it. And I think with the Mets, uh, you know, this year, that is not the case. I mean, there's a hole at the catcher spot. It wasn't addressed. You needed a lefty reliever. It wasn't addressed. And, you know, I guess the DH are platooning, and we'll see how that works. Maybe, you know, Vogelbach's been good so far. Hopefully Ruff, you know, gets yep. hot. Um, but, I, you know, I think ultimately it's, it's, it's a disappointment um, for the Mets. But ultimately, you know, the biggest thing is, is obviously we're going to see on the baseball field, and we're going to see the results here going forward. Um and, you know, I want to get into kind of our next bigger storyline, and that was, of course, Jacob DeGrom pitched yesterday, you know, as we record this on Wednesday, pitched Tuesday, uh, looked really good. Um, six strikeouts, just 59 pitches, went five innings. So obviously he's being eased back into this. You know, he won't pitch any more than 80 pitches probably against Atlanta, um, which I think, you know, he's set to probably face them. I think it would be Sunday, Sunday, yeah, Sunday in afternoon. the series finale. Um, you're going to have Scherzer pitching in, in, in one of the games against Atlanta as well. So, uh, Andrew, that is the biggest thing I think to be positive for with the Mets to have both of these arms back at the top of the rotation. I mean, this puts the Mets above just about everyone uh, in all of baseball, to be honest. Jacob DeGrom being back is going to be, and I bet Billy Epler 
if he hasn't said it, he's definitely thinking it. This is your deadline acquisition, mm. which is like, and we've talked about this. Is like that is a very Will Pond thing yes. to do. It's it lazy, is. It's a lazy argument, to, but to justify not getting better. At the Jacob deadline. Degrom yeah. is Jacob Degrom, yes. and I think we saw yesterday. Even though you lose, I think it's great to see that Jacob Degrom still throwing 100 to 102. The slider. Is I almost, I almost get like kind of scared when he throws yeah. that hard because I think like, oh boy, you know. Well, just what are like, you gonna tell him? To, like, I know. If he I threw know. 98 yeah. or yeah. 97, I think Everyone... people would be like, whoa, he's down five miles yes. an hour. Yes, I totally. <laughs> agree. It's, it's a lose lose situation. I totally agree. Yep. I, I, but having him and Scherzer, if they're both healthy, it's you know, I don't whoever they would add it at the deadline if it's Contreras. Or a JD Martinez. I, I think Martinez is probably the one guy that I think if you added him, I think he really moves the needle because he's such a good hitter. Yeah. I, I think he's the really only guy that I think moves a needle towards a championship to beat a Dodgers, maybe beat a Padres, Braves. I think that having DeGrom back and healthy, and that's obviously a huge if, you know, if, yeah. even right now, even though we saw him pitch well, yep. it was 59 pitches, and you saw him only going five innings really hurt this team because the sixth inning is a black hole for the Mets if they can't really get through you know the starters and the Mets have done a really good job of getting their starters through six DeGrom obviously coming back from injury wasn't able to do that and you saw kind of the bullpen implode on itself so that's I think a big thing going forward is that eventually playoff time September when this division needs to be won maybe even this series you need DeGrom to give you a little extra more if this team wants to win a championship there's no doubt about that I think Scherzer is going to give you that extra little oomph that you need now I think it's up to DeGrom and if you have DeGrom at full strength or at 80 80 percent of what he was last year and you have Scherzer at full strength it's a tough out in the playoffs I don't care if you're the Padres with Juan Soto and a really solid pitching staff in your own rights or the Dodgers with that beginning of the lineup that's such murderers row or even the Braves who obviously the defending World Series champions if you have DeGrom and Scherzer their Mets will be a very very tough out yeah you know and I think what impresses me the most about you know Scherzer and his starts since the IL and then obviously DeGrom we only have one start but still the idea of them just not missing a beat really coming yeah. straight off the IL and the ability to just get right back to 100 percent and I think that credits their their rehab process and their ability to get back and you have to hope that you know they continue to take care of their body remain healthy and obviously uh, focus on August baseball coming up here in a huge series against yeah. Atlanta some big series down the road as well in September and of course into October but looking at this matchup and I've talked about it before the first time you know not the first time but the last time Atlanta uh, faced off against the Mets in June um was the kind of differences in these offenses. And I think it's a really interesting comparison, you know, kind of in, in, in this uh, this third here storyline is kind of Atlanta and their mentality kind of just as, you know, a home run or bust, you could say, is yeah. more of a power stroke and, and, and more focused on that versus the Mets, which it's all about kind of putting at-bats together. It's all about even bunting base runners over, which you rarely see anymore <laughs> in baseball. Um two outs, two strike hitting, you know, runners in scoring position, all that kind of stuff. Versus Atlanta kind of relies on the long ball. 160 homers for Atlanta, that's most in the National League, one of the highest in baseball. I think they're right behind the Yankees. So um, just two different philosophies, which I think when they come together creates um, some really interesting matchups uh, between yeah. these lineups as a whole. Especially when looking at the Mets pitching staff compared to the, the Braves' bats because the Mets obviously power pitching is – you know, when you look at Scherzer or Bassett, and those guys really know how to miss bats compared to the Braves. And we saw it the whole first series, or I guess second series this team played, but the series back in July, where you saw Scherzer go out and deal. You saw Bassett go out with deal. And then even David Peterson pitched really well in a losing effort. So, again, when you look at the Braves and them, you know, as you said, just hitting a ton of home runs, it's really home run or bust, I think, when a team like the Mets. I think when you're facing other teams, if you're Atlanta, you can probably worser teams and whether it's the Phillies or some other lower level team, still good teams, but lower level, you can see some clutch hitting by some of their guys. And obviously they do have a lot of solid, solid players. But when looking at this team against the Mets, to me, and you saw it in that first series, and I think you'll see it again, they are a team that will hit home runs, but when they don't, you'll see the one run, no runs, two runs, efforts. And for them, I think their key is to get runners on base before they hit the home run. Yeah. Because they probably will end up running into one or two a game. But yeah. in that first or the second series in July, it was all solo shots, two-run home run at most. They never got the big three-run homer, the grand slam. I think that's the key for them. And so far, they haven't been able to do it against the Mets. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a big key because the home run ball can completely change a game. Yep. And that's why these teams kind of construct lineups and, you know, and, and, uh, 
look for players that that have the ability to hit that home run ball you know and uh that's what the that's what the Braves have done in constructing this lineup the Mets on the other hand obviously are all about kind of runners in scoring position I think is one of the biggest stats you can find with the Mets hitting you know that is really the difference maker we saw when they went on that little bit of a lull and really struggled offensively they weren't hitting with runners in scoring position they weren't hitting with 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 two outs and you know and runners on base um so clutch hitting will be ultimately very important for the Mets in this series as well um you know but I want to just kind of compare some of the some of the bigger players for each side obviously um you know you mentioned you know the pitchers going in this series for the Mets just quickly you know it's got I think it's Carrasco Thursday um as of now there's no no brave starters announced as of yet so um, e- ESPN does like the projections so yeah. they're technically not official but yeah. it would be Carrasco Wright yeah. Walker Anderson Scherzer Freed yep and then there's the op because it's the double, double header no one knows who's pitching yes and then it would be DeGrom Strider yep yeah, so that should be uh, a couple just incredible matchups <laughs> I mean, there. Yeah. Scherzer and Freed is is going to be really fun to watch um, in the doubleheader. Uh, you know, DeGrom and uh, Strider will be really great as well. Strider's been good for the Braves this year. Um, some great matchups. Carrasco has been excellent for the Mets. That'll yeah. be a great you know way to start it. I mean, that's the thing. That's the strength of this group. It's no, it's no secret that um, you know starting pitching is obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, the series strength of the of this Mets team. We'll see how they match up against you know the power numbers for Atlanta. But looking at you know some of the bigger stars here, obviously Alonzo and Lindor are the guys you think about for the Mets um, with the RBI tandem between the two of them. Alonzo kind of struggled last time against the Braves. Did not have a great series. Two for thirteen. He had eight strikeouts in those three games. But overall, since that series, um, he's been playing much better. He's been getting back to the way he's the been home run really derby. All really season. got him hot. It always does. <laughs> it always it does. seems like it does, but. But uh, 316 and four homers, 14 RBIs heading in, you know, last 15 games. Obviously, that's heading into today before they take on the Nationals um, on Wednesday. But Alonso has been really good. Uh, Lindor has been really locked in as well. And I think that Atlanta series kind of kickstarted him as of recently and how well that he's been playing. Uh, he had a couple huge hits, a you know, big three run homer um, against the Braves. He had a big triple and an RBI as well in that series. So he's been locked in lately, 356 over his last 15. Uh, so those two guys, they're always the guys you watch, and they're those RBI combo that just seem to come up in, in some big spots for the Mets and, and, and drive runners in. The one thing I do want to say about Lindor, and Mets fans love to dog him and say that he's not worth the contract, he shows up in big series. He does. Whether it's the Braves, whether it's the Yankees, even last year when the team was not doing well, it was always Lindor to kind of help that team when they were struggling. It was kind of that, that obviously that big Yankee series was I think a lot of people point to but he's come up in really clutch moments and you saw it again this year and that's why you pay a guy that much money he's playing a great defense as well I know we're obviously talking about his numbers at the plate but he's played a great shortstop too I mean you look at obviously average I don't think is ever going to be his strong suit he's never going to hit 300 he never did in his career and I think he's more of that war type guy the OPS even isn't that high this year but he's been able to drive in runners 18 home runs as a shortstop. I mean, he's going to get to around 30. He's going to be right there, maybe 28, 28 to 30. That's so important, and not a lot of shortstops can do that and drive in over 100 runs. And he, I think, is going to be the key to this Mets series in this series against the Braves. It's going to be him, Alonzo, Marte. Yep. Those are your guys. That's what I was about to say. We have to mention Marte. Yeah, because Marte, well he's been hitting. He's been so good. And he's yep. got a lot of clutch hits, too. Yeah. And he's a guy that, once he gets on base, obviously he's a threat to steal or go first to third. He runs the bases really well. So, uh, again, I think between those three guys, and you could even add, like, McNeil in there as well, those are going to be your guys that are going to help this team succeed in this series. Now, I think in the last series we were talking about a little bit before, but Luis Guillorme had a great series, and you'll probably see one guy maybe show up. But for the most part, it's going to be Alonzo, it's going to be Lindor, and you're going to rely on your stars hitting, I think, whereas the Braves may. Obviously, we're going to talk about it. They have some really solid players, but a lot of their guys really up and down the lineup. I think that they have really – anyone's a home run threat in that lineup. Yeah. Whereas the Mets, they're going to be definitely looking at that meat of the order. That's where they're going to score their runs. I don't think Tomas Nito is going to give you too much production at the bottom. Eduardo Escobar, obviously, like your seven, eight, nine, it's kind of that black hole. Hopefully, your DH is now fixed with Vogelbach and uh, Ruff there, but – Again, I, I think the Mets, it's going to be their stars. They're going to rely on their stars. It's worked to this point, and they're going to need to see that continue. Meanwhile, for the stars in Atlanta, um, it starts with Austin Riley. Just signed a, a 10-year, $212 million contract. What a deal for the Braves, um, too. Yeah, I mean, the Braves <laughs> have locked up just about every you know big name in their lineup. 
uh, you know, either in the past or this year. So they've done a really good job locking those guys up. Riley has been on fire 412 over his last 30 games heading into today. Um, he is the biggest difference maker in the lineup. He, I think, is the guy that these Mets pitchers will be watching out for the most, will be game planning for the most. And if there's an open base, you know, best believe <laughs> they'll be working around Austin Riley with that presence in the lineup. He definitely is a difference maker for Atlanta. He is such a quick bat. I, I think it was the homer he hit. I forgot who was off of, but it was the inside corner, and he just came right through it, barreled it up, and hit a homer against the Mets. And it's really impressive to watch him hit. He's hitting 300 and also has 29 homers. OPS is over 950. And when those types of guys, you know, you see those types of guys, especially in runners scoring position or a runner on base, if I'm the Mets, you really, if you're Scherzer, I think, you know, you, you, I think he's so good at just getting guys out, kind of game planning. But I, I forgot who took him deep. I forgot which game it was. I don't remember. I, I, I think it may have been. Because it wasn't Peterson. I think he gave up the homer to Olsen, if I yes, not believe. Yes, he did. That yeah, was a so, big homer. Yep. Uh, but uh, Riley, I think it wouldn't. I think it may have been off Scherzer that he hit one in the first game. But he is so good. He'll hit him off anybody. He's, he he's such a quick difference. bat. He's a great swing. And he's yeah. a guy that's kind of came, I don't want to say out of nowhere, but he's really came on over the last few years as really you know, a, a great hitter. And he may be their next Freddie Freeman. Obviously, Freeman leaves. He may cement himself right in there, just signed a 10-year deal. Yeah, Riley will be a big piece. Dansby Swanson as well. Who's also a having a great year. For this group. Also having a very good season, 407 in his last seven. He's 11 for 27. Um, so he's been good lately. Uh, he's been good overall in the last, you know, 15 games or even the last month. So Dansby Swanson, another guy that's locked in. Two great shortstops in this matchup between him and Lindor. That'll be really exciting to watch. Um, but before, you know, we end off this this preview here, of course, we have to mention the NLE standings. I mean, that is the that is the biggest factor, of course, with this series. Um, when you play five games in a row against a team, uh, it's obviously going to be very, very important considering how tight the NL, NL East re- race has been uh, so far this year. So it's going to be, I think, if you see, you know, the Braves take three or four out of five, then uh, this NL East could be completely flipped <laughs> and, and, and you could see the Braves in first place for the first time since, you know, I, I, I think, think all year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think all year because yeah. you go back to like April 12th and I think, you know, maybe some the Phillies or the Marlins were in first place. Who knows? Like a but, day or two. Um, two yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, obviously the Mets have been in control uh, in terms of in first place for most of the season. But the same thing could happen the other way. You could see the Mets really, you know, uh, I think win this series. I think three out of five is definitely a positive for the Mets. Um, anything more than that would be, you know, just I great. think they can do it. Um, this is a home series, too. We haven't talked about it. It's but a home series. I think that's a big difference. The Mets play maker. well at home, I think, too. Too. The crowd is going to come out uh, definitely to support at City Field and all weekend. Better long. than the Braves play on the road. I mean, the Braves are only six games over on the road, mm. whereas they're uh, sixteen games over at home. So the Mets and City Field, that crowd, I think, will be pumping. And I, I just have a feeling that the Mets at home and in this series, I'd be surprised if, if they lost four to five. I mean, you you could just call me wrong then about this whole season. I, I like my things. This team's different. I think this team's different than twenty twenty one or gonna past have the to years. Show. I think it's going to show um, at a, in a series like this where you know I talked to you about my concern with the trade deadline was just its impact on the players. You know, I yeah. worry about when you don't get an impact name coming through the doors. Sometimes players take that as you know, kind of disappointment. They take that as, uh, you know, you know, expecting something bigger than what they got. Who I think knows? they like this. Th- these guys, yeah, though, I think together, they do. <laughs> I, I think you know, who knows what's going through their minds? But yeah. sometimes that can be an issue with this team. But I think overall, you're going to see it in this five game set. And one thing I find really cool about a five game series is every, you know, every one of your starters is going to pitch. You know, you, it's really, yeah. I think, <laughs> a full test of well, technically, one team. Bassett won't pitch for the Mets. Yeah. And uh, whoever's going today is not going. That's for that. I think it's Kyle Wright. That's not Well, going the, the, I guess with the doubleheader, <laughs> that yeah, makes it a little different. But yeah. um, my point is, is that you're basically seeing uh, top guys are going though. Yeah, the top guys for each side, and it's it's I think the best comparison of where these two teams are at right now. Oh, yeah. And I think you're ultimately going to get. You know, every time you play Atlanta, it's a good judge of where the Mets are at, and I think this is a great opportunity for them to show that just like they did in the last series against Atlanta, that you know. Mets fans and and everyone might be doubting them at times and and a little bit stressed with how they've been playing uh, or what happened at the deadline. But when it comes down to it against these big games in Atlanta, you're going to see who shows up. You're going to see which side, you know, I think is in a better spot. And the Mets have a great opportunity at home at Citi Field uh, to prove Atlanta wrong. Uh, Andrew, I want to get just before you get out of here predictions. How many games do the Mets win in this five game set against Atlanta? I think it's three or four. You know what? To be bold. 
mm, I, I, four to five would be really tough. And I, if, if they won four to five, I you mean, were I gonna think, say it though. I, 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 I heard it in your voice. You know what? You said, Let's just do it. Four to five. Okay. I think they're winning both Degrom and Scherzer starts, okay. and then and then I, I think that Carrasco and and, and then Walker. it's Walker. They're sneaky good, and yeah. no one's talked about them. Yeah, how good they've been. Carrasco's been especially really good Carrasco. Yeah, and Mets fans love to dog on Carrasco for whatever reason, just because of last year. I think just like it's so funny. I think in New York, I think other places too. But the first impressions mean so much yep. uh, on a player, and just Carrasco. Obviously, last year was not very good. Yep. This year, he's been so so solid. And it's came in when the rotation at times has not been, you know, with injuries and whoever, whatever the situation is. He's always c- came up and really thrown five or six innings of solid baseball. Yeah, he's given, up, he's so given up three runs in July. He's He's got a .9 <laughs> ERA in the month crazy. of July. So he's been dominant. Walker has been, you know, another guy that's kind of under the radar, been very good all year. Um, yeah. Very good all year. He was Who could have made an all-star, yes, all-star team, Yes, I think too. his first half was just as good as last year, right around similar to when he did make the all-star team. So... Um, those two guys as well make a difference. I'm gonna say a uh, three out of five. I, I, I think three out of five. I'm a little. I mean, bit... my head says three out of five, but yeah. my heart is. I, I understand. I understand. I think three out of five is great for the Mets. I think if they can do that, because when you have Degrom and Scherzer, I feel like you have to win both of those you games. It. You know, those are two wins, and then you know you find a way to win one more. I think with Carrasco and Walker, you could definitely win one of those two, if not both of them. So it will be interesting to see this. Um, I think is uh, the obviously the biggest series of the year and uh, a, a huge test for the Mets, a huge test for the Braves. It's going to be a battle. Uh, it's going to be a really exciting weekend. And a five-game series. When do we get to see this? A five-game yeah, series? Never. It's like literally a, play- a playoff it's like, series. Yeah, it's like a playoff series. In it's, August. It's literally a playoff preview. Yeah. It's going to be a, a playoff atmosphere. Andrew, you and I will be there covering – uh, the games all weekend long, which should be very, very yeah. exciting. But I think that's going to do it for our Brave Series preview. A f- a five quick storylines there uh, to look out for heading in to Thursday. For Sam Davis and Andrew Galata, this has been the Braves Mets and Braves Series preview with WFUV Sports.